this is Celia Urbanite, teacher Annie sa America, spreading the love to all my fellow teachers right there in the Philippines and to all over the world who is aspiring to be a J1 or H1 teachers here in the U.S. And today, because I am so inspired, especially to those who just subscribe to my channel and keep on watching my content, we are going to talk about how are you going to get your social security number, which is one of the most important identification if you are here in the U.S.? So a social security number is a means of your identification in the U.S. And if you're supposed to receive a funding from the U.S. employer, then you are eligible to obtain a social security number. And if you are a J-1 visa holder or a J-1 participant, you will need to have your SSN in order for you to get paid by your host school. And the process for obtaining SSN is very simple. However, there are a number of steps that involve, so it takes time, and you will need to anticipate and plan accordingly. So as a J-1 participant, we may arrive in the U.S. up to 30 days before for our program and then we can use this to apply for our social security number so the question is how does a j1 visa holder obtain a social security number so in order for you to obtain your social security number as a j1 participant we must take the following steps and again i want you to take note of these following steps Number one, you need to look for the nearest social security office for you to schedule an appointment. So the participant needs to visit a local social security office with all your required documents in order for you to apply. And I believe right now you need to schedule an appointment online before they're going to cater you to process your application. And it is advised that the participant that the participant applies the SSN no less than 10 days after entry to the US and 48 hours after your uh, after you inform your visa sponsor that you are here in the U.S. already. And this is also to ensure that all databases have adequate time to communicate with one another. And applying before this time may also result in further delays. So to apply, the participant will need to look or need to prepare the following documents to their nearest social security office. So what are the documents that you need to complete before you go to your social security administration? Number one, you need to complete your form SS-5. This is an application form for your social security number. This is available at the office or you can also download it to their website, which must include your legal name as the name to be printed in your social security card. Your legal name is the name in your passport, the name you enter on your form as a spy must exactly match the name reflected in your passport. Number two, at least two documents that establish your age and identity, including your passport, and one additional document establishing your identity. That's why you need to go to your uh, local DMV first to get your state ID, and I will have a separate video for that on how to get your state ID. Number three is your service form or DS-2019. Number three is your form ID. 94 and number five is an offer letter or an invitation letter from your host school so those are the five documents that you need to make sure you have it in your backpack before you go to ssa or else you will end up nothing number two is you have to wait so it may take over two weeks to most to receive your ssn and which will be mailed to the address that you provided in the form ss5 if you're staying in an apartment make sure that you put your apartment number or if you have a p.o box make sure you have the right p.o box or else it will return to them and if you don't have the right address and it's a hassle. There's also one question that do J1 participants need an SSN to begin their program? Well, actually, no. Uh, for this, you have to read the guidance or from the Social Security Administration regarding this topic. However, participants can be added to their host school without an SSN. All they just need to do is to present the receipt to their host school that they already applied for their SSN. And they can actually write a dummy number to enroll them on the payroll until they get their number. However, there are cases that the school district will not pay you until you have one. They will just divide your annual salary to how many pays left 
for you within a year and then they are not going to give you two pays if you miss two pays they are just going to divide it to how many pays you will choose for one year of contract and also participants must give their host uh, or their school there are social security number listed on the card the moment they receive it right away and I would like to remind everyone as well that participants or J1 participants should not be classified as independent contractors. And I have second question as well that needs to be answered. If a participant received an SSN in the past already, do they need to apply again? Then actually the answer for that is no. You're good to go already. And SSN is a lifelong personal identification number. If a J-1 participant has already been in the U.S. and obtained their SSN previously, they do not need to apply for a new SSN. The number previously obtained should simply be used. So use your SSN wisely because this helps you obtain your credit score as well as applying for your credit cards, for your cars, for your apartments, and for your electricity bill. So you are not supposed to carry your SSN card in your wallet. Instead, keep it in a safe place. So that's all for today, guys. It's a short video, but I know this is very helpful. This is actually a guide for you, and especially for those who just landed a job here in the U.S. Please comment below in the comment section what content I should make again on my next video. And still, this is your Pinay Teacher Annie saying I'm a proud teacher, and I know you are a proud teacher as well. So please like and share this video.